Hello everyone, today is day 24 of my 30 day SQL query challenge and today we are going to be using regular expressions to solve a problem in SQL. Now as you can see, this is the problem statement that I have. We have been given a table which has information about the different feedbacks given by different customers along with their customer email address. Now the problem statement basically states a consumer electronics store in Warsaw stores all the customer feedback in feedback table. The email IDs mentioned by the customers are then used by the store to contact customers to promote any upcoming sales. However, some of the customers while sharing feedback enter invalid email address. Write an SQL query to identify and return all the valid email address from the feedback table. Okay, I think it is pretty straightforward, right? We have this table, it has some email address of some customers. We need to write a query to identify the valid email address and then return it as our output. Now, first of all, how do you determine which is a valid email address and which is invalid, right? For that, they have already given us the rule that we need to follow, okay? So basically, they are saying a valid email address needs to have three parts. Part one is the username. A username can contain upper or lowercase letters numbers and special characters like underscore, dot or hyphen. So only three special characters are allowed, underscore, dot and hyphen and it can have uppercase or lowercase letters and some numbers. A username should always start with a letter. The second part in this email ID should always have a at symbol. Okay, And the third part is the domain which needs to have two sub parts. First part contains an uppercase or lowercase letters followed by a dot symbol and then followed by two or three letters. Right Now we know that generally how an email address looks and whatever is mentioned here is probably the common format how an email address generally looks like. Right Now how do we write a query to identify the valid email address from this list? This is the challenge that we have for today. Now I will be solving this problem in two different databases. First I'll show you the solution in PostgreSQL. In PostgreSQL regular expression is supported so I'll use the regular expressions to uh, solve this problem and then I'll show you the solution in Microsoft SQL Server. In SQL Server, as far as I know, regular expression is not supported. So I'll give you an alternate solution to perform that activity. Now you know what you need to do. You can download the data set and try to solve this problem on your own and then share your solution in Discord Server. Okay. Now straight away, I'm going to go into my PostgreSQL database. I have already created the table Okay, and I'm going to solve it. Now I have already told you that we'll be using regular expressions. Now, how do you determine if you need to use regular expressions for a particular problem is because here we need to find the values which matches a particular pattern. Right, So this is the pattern that we need to follow for the email address. So whenever you have a requirement where you need to match something and it's not like a direct match but you have a pattern and you need to match a pattern then that is a pretty good indication that you need to use regular expression. Now in PostgreSQL using regular expression is very very simple. It is very similar to how you would use it in Python or probably in any other programming language. Okay. Now what I can do is I can just put a filter saying that where email and the only thing is the symbol that I need to use basically in order to use regular expression is this symbol that is the tilde symbol. Okay, so I need to mention this and then here I need to provide my pattern. Okay, so I need to provide a pattern here and any data that matches this pattern that will get returned here. So what is the pattern I need to give? I know that the first character of my email address should always be a letter, right? In lowercase or in uppercase. So what I can do is I can just put inside inside the square brackets, I'll just say lowercase a to z and uppercase a to z. Okay, now what this means is it basically will match with any character that is from a to z. So all the English alphabets in lowercase and all the English alphabets in uppercase. Okay, and after that, I know that the first character can be a letter, but the second character can be a number, a dot or uh, an underscore, etc. Right. So what I'll do for that is I'll just mention the same thing. Okay. In addition to that, I'll also mention the digits 0 to 9 and I'll also mention the special characters. So it can be underscore, it can be a dot or it can be a hyphen, right? So, and then I'm just going to put a star here. Okay. I'll tell you what this means. So when I say this pattern, basically it's going to match with any alphabet, uppercase or lowercase and only one alphabet. Okay. Because I just did not mention any star or plus or anything here, right? So it will always look for at least one letter or one character which will match this pattern followed by any letter or character that is going to match this pattern that is any letters okay a to z in uppercase or lowercase any digit 0 to 9 
and any of these three special characters. And then there is a star. Star basically means zero or more characters. So either you can have any of these or even if you don't have it's fine or you can have more than one that is also fine. So that is what star does. Okay. So I think that is fine. Then I need to have an at symbol, right? Because you, you have a at symbol in the uh, middle. Then it's followed by this domain. Now the domain again has two parts, right? The first part is I'll just say A to Z or in lowercase or uppercase. Basically, uh, I know that my domain has to be a letter. Okay. Then followed by a dot symbol. Now, of course, here I need to say how many characters I'll have, right? So if I don't put a star or a plus or something, then SQL is going to expect at least only one character okay so i know that this domain can be gmail right that means there are four characters it can have more than one character at least one character should be there but it can have more than one right so i'll just say plus now here i should not put star because if i put star it basically means zero or more so you probably could have at dot com so no domain as such that will not work right i need to have some character right so i'll put plus plus basically tells at least there should be one letter after the at symbol and then after that it can be followed by a dot right now the problem is i cannot just mention a dot here because in regular expression dot basically is kind of like it will match with any character right so if i only want to match with explicitly the dot character then i need to escape it by using this slash so i say escape uh, so i use the escape character and then i mention the uh, dot symbol okay so this way it will only look for this particular symbol dot now once i have done that the last part is basically i need to match for this dot com or the de etc right for that again i'll say it has to be letters a to z uppercase or lowercase and it can be basically one or more right so now if i just run this you can see that i am getting uh, i think one two three six records so there are kian asher zoya ayan idris and abrar if i look at my output all of them are fine except that i should not be getting this abrar the last uh, customer info okay why because after dot com there is a additional em here okay so this is invalid actually this should not happen right so it has to be either three care three letters or two letters and that is what is mentioned in this problem statement okay now in order to handle that what i can do is instead of plus i can use this flower brackets here and i can say minimum value and maximum value so whatever characters are returned here minimum it can basically be two of those characters or maximum three of those characters okay now if i run it i am getting still the same output okay the reason for that is it is actually matching with this um, this email address, but it's I have not told where the pattern matching should stop. Okay, and that is why we need to generally use this dollar symbol. The dollar symbol at the end means once this pattern has been matched, there should be no other characters after that. This is whatever you see here should be the last character. Okay, so as soon as the dot com comes that the pattern matching should stop there and there should not be any characters after that. Okay, that is what dollar does. Similar to dollar, we can also use a symbol that is a caret symbol in the beginning, which basically tells the first character should be this. Okay, so by putting a caret here, it basically tells that the first character should match with whatever pattern you have given here. In our case, even without this caret, it works because in all of our email address, the first character is always a string. If at all you try with some other values where the first character is something else, then you will realize that you need to have this caret symbol. Okay. So this caret basically means the start of the st uh, string and dollar basically means the end of the string. Now, if I run it, now you can see that I am getting only the five correct email addresses that I actually wanted. Okay. So this is basically my solution to the problem. If you are still not clear, I would highly recommend that you try to change the data set and then try to uh, play around this pattern. You will better understand it then. Now I'm going to show you my solution in SQL Server. But before that, I want to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is LearnSQL.com. LearnSQL.com is a dedicated SQL learning platform where you'll find 70 plus courses related to SQL. So some of these courses are specific to learning different concepts in SQL and some courses are specific to solving practice SQL queries. Now, currently, there is a special offer going on on this platform where one of their very popular courses is actually given for free. 
and the course that is given for free is basically the window functions course in PostgreSQL. Okay. Now, in order to access this course for free, you just need to create a free account and you will be able to complete this course. So, let me just show you quickly how this course looks like. Okay. So, if I just show you the course content, you will see that initially there is a quick introduction about what you will be learning in this course and few practice questions that can just get you ready for learning about window functions. Then they teach you about the over clause, the over clause with partition by uh, clause. Then you will learn about the ranking functions, then about the different frame clauses that you can use with window functions. Then you will learn about a few different window functions like lead, lag, first value, etc. Then there is how do you use partition by with the order by clause. They will explain you that and there are lots of different exercises that you can uh, solve in order to understand this concept. Then there is the evaluation order. And then there is this practice field. Okay, this basically where everything that you have learned about window functions, you will basically be put into test. Okay, everything that you have learned, you will now get a chance to practice all of the things that you have learned. Okay, and then finally there is a quiz which you will need to pass in order to basically complete this course. Okay, now this course is actually given for free only during this month. So I would highly recommend that you just create a free account and try to complete this course if you want to learn about window functions. Okay. And let's say if you like this course and you like this platform, then you can go and explore all the other courses that are offered by LearnSQL.com. Now, in most of these courses, the initial few exercises are actually given for free. So, you don't even need to purchase the course straight away. First of all, you can just check out all the free exercises that are given in each of the courses. And if you like it, only then you can purchase the courses. Now, if you are interested in learning more about this platform, I'll leave a link in the video description. So, definitely check them out. Now, let me get back into solving this problem using the SQL Server database. Okay. Now, as you can see in SQL Server, I have again already created the table. Now, I need to basically write a pattern with which I can match all the valid email address. Okay. Now, I told you in SQL Server, a regular expression is not supported as such. Okay. But you can still do some kind of pattern matching using the like operator. Okay. So, what I can say is I'll do email like. First of all, I'm going to give a pattern on how I expect my email address to look like. So I can just tell my first character will always be a lowercase or an uppercase letter. So I'll say A to Z and A to Z, right? And I'll just copy this and then it can be followed by any other characters for now. Let's say it can be followed by any other characters. And after that, there needs to be an at symbol. Then again, there needs to be some letters, right? And that letters can be there can basically be one or more such letters. So, I'll put a percentage. Percentage basically means and it matches any character. Okay. And then I need to have a dot symbol. Then again, I will need to mention the characters. Okay. So, any uh, alphabets in lowercase or uppercase. And again, it can be one or more. Right. So, what this pattern matches is, this basically is like the basic uh, pattern of how an email should look like. Okay. It starts with a letter and then it can be followed by any characters. Then there needs to be a at symbol. Then again, there will be some letter and there will be a letter. Okay. And then that letter will be followed by any characters. Then there needs to be a dot. Then again, some letters. And then there can be again any number of uh, such characters. Okay. Now, if I just run this, you can see I have totally 13. If I run this, you can see that I have already removed some of the invalid email addresses. Okay. So this basically gives me almost half of my result here. But as you can see, this is not complete because some of the problems that I see here is you can see there are some emails where an invalid characters are used. So I have a hash here and I have two at symbols here. I should not have them right now in order to eliminate them. I'll put another filter condition saying that where email not like. Okay. And I'll put this uh, some pattern here. Okay. So what I want to do is I know that these special characters are basically in the beginning, right? After the add symbol, I think it is all fine, but probably in the beginning, I need to do something. So what I'll do is I'll just give a list of characters. So I'll just copy this again. Okay. I'll say this one and then I'll say zero to nine. Okay. And then I'll say the three special characters that is allowed. That is, uh, I have underscore dot and hyphen. Okay. And here in the beginning, I'm going to put a caret symbol. Okay. Now don't confuse this caret symbol with the meaning that I gave for uh, PostgreSQL. In PostgreSQL, this symbol basically means the beginning of the string. Whereas in SQL Server, when I'm using it, and I'm, this is basically not a regular expression, right? So when I'm using this caret symbol, just like this, it basically means not. Okay. So 
anything that is other than these characters, it will match. Okay. So this basically, this symbol, the caret symbol here basically means not or the opposite. So any characters that is other than the characters that, that are specified here, it will match for that. Okay. So ideally it should basically match for hash and then this two at symbols, right? And since I'm putting a not like, this record and this record will get eliminated. Okay, that is what I'm doing. Now, this is for the first part, the username part. But after the at symbol, I don't need to do anything. I will just use the same uh, pattern that I already had here. Now, if I run it and I need to select and if I run it, now you can see that from eight, I have got the six email addresses. Okay, so the email where there was a hash and two at symbols, they are now eliminated. Now, the last problem that I need to solve here is again this one, the last email abrar where there are two, uh, the, the dot com, there is an additional M, right? Now, in order to fix that, what I'll do is, or in order to remove that, what I'll do is, I'll use one concept or a simple logic. If you are aware, there is a function called reverse in SQL Server. If I just run this, what it will do is, whatever value you give, it is going to reverse that uh, value, okay? And now you can see that the dot com is in the reverse order. And from here, let's say if I just search for the position of that dot okay that i can do by saying care index and i'll say i'm searching for dot uh, in this reversed value if i run it you can see that the dot symbol is present in the fifth position okay now if after dot com if basically after the dot if there are only three characters the dot position should always be either four it should either be in the fourth position or in the third position for example instead of dot com if I like, if I remove that additional M and if I run it, now you'll see that the car index will return four, okay, which is basically valid. Or you can also have something like DE, right? One of the email that we have, okay? Now the position would be three. So the position of this dot symbol in the reverse order should either be three or four, right? And that is exactly the logic that I will use, okay? So I will just uh, remove this and here I'll just tell car index. Uh, and here I'll just put email and this needs to be between three and four. Okay. And I think that's all. If I run this, now you can see that I'm getting Kian, Asher, Zoya, Ayan, Idris. And I think that is exactly the output that I wanted. Okay. So this is basically my solution in SQL Server. Okay. I hope you like this problem. If you did, make sure to like the video and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again tomorrow with another interesting problem. Bye.